Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Um, I solved a problem this week, and I'm really, really happy about it. We had an issue uh, with certificates on our firewall. Uh, we had this uh, business partner, we'll say, that uh, needed to connect to the web page of our firewall. It's basically, it's the portal page. Um, you hit that, you type in a username and password. You're taken to a, a download page where you can download the VPN client, and from there you can install it on your PC. Um, for years, literally for years, we've been using self-signed certificates and have not had a problem. When we've had questions about it, they would call and ask, and say, hey, this says it's not a, not a valid certificate. And I'd say, well, no, legally, it's technically it's not. Um, it's a self-signed cert. It's, it's ours. It's okay. You can, you know, just click accept and uh, you'll get to the web page. And nobody's ever had a problem with that. Well, recently we ran into a vendor who has uh, some firewall settings such that um, the, it will not allow them to connect to a site that doesn't have a valid certificate. Um, so normally when that happens, we tell people, well, just go home or go, go to Starbucks and download from there. Well, this particular company has, for their laptops, they have always on VPN connections, so they can only connect to any place on the internet through their firewall at work. It's a good security move, but it uh, made made my life difficult. Um, so there just was no way that home or Starbucks or at work that they could get to our portal page. So I was asked to uh, acquire a public certificate, trusted certificate that we could put on there and you know, get rid of the certificate error. Now we had one, uh, one of the server guys, Mike, Mike, the server guys, we call him Mike because that's his name, Mike. Um, he ordered a, ser uh, a cert uh, wild part, wild card server certificate. So it could be anything dot blah dot com, whatever our domain name is here. And I don't really want to give out our domain name. Uh, he ordered that, so that was available for me to use. So, okay, great. And so started the uh, the first part of my woes was finding out the correct way to install this certificate on Palo Alto Firewall. And um, so we received the certificate in a couple of different forms. We received it in a, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be looking over here at this other screen. Um, we just got stuff on there I don't want to show you guys. So it, we, we got the certificate in two forms. One was a .pfx file, and the other one was just a, a flat CRT certificate file. I am not a certificate expert, so you guys that are, feel free to correct me in the comments below. Um, I don't mind that at all, because if I can learn something, that's great too. But as I understand it, uh, certificates that show up in the .pfx form, with the .pfx extension, that's, you can kind of think of it as like a zip file for certificates. It can have many certificates in there and it can have password information in there or, pre, or uh, secret key information. So we have that file and then we also have a .crt file, which is just, you know, flat a certificate, a single certificate. There's no private key information in there or anything like that. So, so to make this work, what I had to do, I'm going to share a screen here real quick. Um, let's see, share. And I want to share, where is it? This guy right here. Share, there we go. So what you're looking at here, is the dot pfx file and you can see there's a top level certificate there there's an intermediate level certificate this is like the trusted root up here this is an intermediate certificate and this is our server certificate down here at the bottom with the wild card on the front so it's don't we don't care what it is 
could be vpn.blah.com or it could be server.blah.com or it could be www.blah.com. This certificate will work for anything at .blah.com. Not a real domain name. Well, maybe it is, but it's not my real domain name. Um, so what we did is, uh, what we had ended up having to do is if you click this top level and click view certificate, another window will pop up where you can look at, you know, general details, the certification path, blah, blah, blah. But this details tab, you have the ability to copy that to a file. So what that's gonna do is take just this one top level certificate here and export it out to a file. So I did that. I also did that on this second, this intermediate certificate here. You know, look, you know, view certificate, click details, copy to file, exported that to a file. I also did it with the, the bottom level, the server certificate, and exported that to a file, but I didn't need that. Didn't need that at all. So I ended up having to do that. But the first thing I tried was just to import the .pfx file into the firewall. And it would import just fine and show up as a, as a valid certificate, but it wouldn't work. When I imported the certificate created by this, this top level guy right here, um, I hope you can see what I'm pointing at. I'm moving the mouse over it. Maybe you can't. But this, this, this guy right here that I just blocked out, here you go. Here, let's do this. So when I exported that guy, got the file for that, I imported that into the firewall. The original uh, PFX certificate file that I, and I'm sorry, this is gonna get really deep and kind of hard to follow without actually seeing visuals, but I'm just not gonna show you the internals of my firewall. Sorry, just not gonna do that. Anyway, so I had previously imported the entire this whole entire certificate thing, thing we're looking at right now, the whole .pfx file. So it was just sitting in there, not working. When I imported this one right here, then the original certificate I imported showed up as a subordinate, just like it shows here in the firewall. So I'm looking at the certificates in the firewall. Here's that, here's that top level uh, certigo, and then the server certificate was under that. So then um, I imported this certificate, this guy right here, into the firewall. And then again, it showed up just like we see here. We had a top level, we had an intermediate, and then my server certificate was on the bottom. Okay, that was the first key in making this work, was splitting out these first two certificates and then importing the whole thing. Um, and the thing is, when I imported this, uh, PFX file. I keep forgetting what it is. When I imported that, I had to import the pri I had to put the private key in. So that got stored, I guess, with the server certificate down here. And uh, for whatever reason, like I said, sorry, I just I don't understand certificates all that well. Um, having having the server certificate on its own wasn't enough. I had to have these intermediate and top level certificates. So okay got that installed now uh so you're gonna do a stop share here real quick so you can see my face nice and big again um so we got we got that and got the certificate installed okay great that's what we need um let me share this too because i'll need something to do show and tell even though it's not going to be Super helpful. It'll be somewhat helpful. So within the Palo Alto firewall, you got the, um, as far as VPN, remote VPN connections, we're not talking IPsec tunnels or anything like that. We're not talking IPsec tunnels. We're talking, I like saying IPsec. Um, we're talking uh, VPN client software or the agent software, as they like to call it. So to connect the firewall, there's a couple of little things you got to configure within the firewall. You have to configure a portal and you have to configure a gateway. And uh, what the portal does, um, let me get my description up here that I wrote up a little earlier. 
So yeah, initially you point your client to this portal. And that's the same thing you point to when you open up a web page and type in the IP address of the firewall or the VP or the DNS name of the firewall. Um, we have to start using the DNS name since that's what the certificate points to is a DNS name. So they point to point to the DNS name of the firewall. First thing that's going to come uh, up is the portal, which is going to serve up a web page. It's going to ask for a username and password. That's also the first thing that the uh, client is going to hit. Um, you know what? I think I just misspoke. The portal doesn't serve up the web page or doesn't seem to. I think it's served up by the gateway, but we'll get to that. So to make this work, and I have to pull up my firewall over here in the other window to refer to what I did. So I'm sorry if I'm going to be looking over here because that's where my other window is. So in the portal configuration, there is an agent configuration. That's the actual fire, the actual uh, VPN client software that's going to connect. In that agent config, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can configure, like authentication, um, external stuff that it's going to be pointing to, and just, just a whole bunch of stuff. Application uh, configurations. Um, you can configure anything on the client you want to. Well, buried deep within that, there's a there's a like an external setting. Like, what am I? What are you telling the client to point to? Um, what we have always had in there is the IP address of the firewall. Well, that was what was not allowing client authentication because it was saying, hey, the certificate that I'm seeing that I just installed here doesn't match what you're telling me, which is the IP address. So what we had to do is go in here to this, these external settings and change the address from the IP to the DNS name which is what's going to match the certificate. So that got the external client or the uh, client software authentication working, which was broken. Uh, remember I was saying I could make the SSL web page work, but it would break authentication. That fixed the authentication, but that did not fix the SSL authentication. For that, I had to go, I'm still looking over here at my config, uh, wait for it to come up, wait for it to come up, wait for it. Okay, so for that, I had to come down here to the gateway config. Isn't this confusing? Just to have one client connect, you got to have a portal, you got to have a gateway. There's reasons for that. When, when you get into bigger enterprises, there's reasons for that, but we're not a big enterprise, so it's kind of, kind of overkill for us. Um, so I had to go into this gateway config. And remember, the, the portal is where you initially connect, where the client gets its all its initial settings. The gateway is what actually lets you into, into the environment, the enterprise here, into the environment. So in the inside, that's what the gateway does. And what I had to do is there's an authentication setting within that gateway. And I had to tell it to use this certificate when SSL connections are made to that gateway. So same certificate had to be put in two different places. And uh, once Palo Alto got on the phone, it was pretty quick, but I never would have found uh, that portal setting. Um, it was buried deep, deep in the pages and pages of, of web GUI settings that these Palo Alto firewalls have. Uh, I was thinking it was going to be one little checkbox. Well, it was just one little form that had to be filled out with a DNS name. So that basically fixed clients being able to hit our web page and then still being able to successfully authenticate to, uh, to the firewall. So anyway, I, I really wish I could show you the settings of the firewall because it would make so much more sense if you could see them but I don't want to, <laughs> I'm just not going to, um, there's too many clever people out there that would try to mess me up just to prove a point, just to prove how dumb I am and how smart they are. And I'm just not going to 
not going to chance that. So um, Palo Alto is a good firewall, but just it is infinitely configurable and it can just make you crazy at times. Um, so, but I like it otherwise. It's it's a good firewall. Um, it's an application layer firewall, so I can I don't have to block a protocol and port. You know, if I want to block Facebook, I can just block it. I can just say block Facebook. And then every single protocol, every single port that Facebook uses is blocked. I don't have to know what they are. The, the firewall knows. So let me cancel out of my stuff over here so I don't make any inadvertent changes to the firewall. Get out of there. So anyway, that, uh, that solved that issue. And I am much relieved because uh, there was a lot of pressure out there to, to get it fixed. Um, and getting a hold of Palo Alto was a little problematic this time. Because um, it depends on what time of day you open your, your case with them. will determine what part of the world the tech support person is going to be in. So a lot of times, it seems mine either come in late in the day or early in the morning, and they get assigned to the other side of the world. And so when I'm at work and ready to work on it, the tech guy isn't there, or the tech gal. They're not there. So I had to specifically ask a couple of times and even get our sales rep involved. <laughs> I need this assigned to someone in my time zone, please. And uh, we we finally kind of sort of got that. He was still on the other side of the world, but he was working in my time zone. So that, that worked out. So anyway, that's the long, sad tale. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you're still watching, thank you. Um, if you like what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, and uh, keep all the great comments coming. And those sucky comments, guys, don't even bother. I just delete them. <laughs> you know, you want to tell me what an idiot I am? I already know. I'm just going to delete those. So uh, anyway, keep the great comments coming. Uh, keep the questions coming. Love, love trying to answer your questions, except when it comes to how much will I earn. I don't know. Uh, depends. So anyway, again, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys all next week. God bless. And where is it? Where is that? Stop.